this week's waiver wire might just be the worst week I've ever seen. It is so bad. I don't know if there's a single player you could pick up this week that will actually help your lineup for the upcoming week. Maybe there's like three of them. There's like seven players coming back. This week is more for planning ahead. In the coming weeks, right, you actually have to be in the playoffs for these guys to probably make a factor in your league. All right, we're talking about the Deshaun Watsons. We're talking about the Odell Beckhams. We're talking about the Kyron Williams and the Jameson Williams and all those guys coming back from injury that aren't going to affect your lineup this week. But these are guys we got to talk about. Otherwise, we wouldn't have a piece of content to put out today. So we're going to run through the storyline of the Week 10 waiver wire, starting with our quarterback streamer of the week. Mr. Marcus Mariota and prize picks has him at 158.5 passing yards for Thursday night football's game against Carolina. Let me tell you something about Carolina. Carolina has allowed their opposing quarterback to hit this number right here every single week since week one. Jacoby Brissett didn't do it in week one. Every single quarterback has hit it since then. And since week two, every quarterback has gone over 200 passing yards. You know why? Because they rank 23rd in pass rush and they rank 20th in coverage. They're bottom 12 in both categories. They're not a good pass defense. Mariota, not exactly a great passer, but he'll hit this line. All right. He's got the weapons to do it. Little bounce back game here. Little bounce, little get right for Mr. Marcus Mariota and the Atlanta Falcons. So go on prize picks right now because they're sitting there with this line. If you use promo code BDGE, you're a first time depositor. They're going to match whatever you put down. So if you put down 40 to play with, they're going to give you 80. You can go nail that Marcus Mariota line right now. Go pick them up as a streaming option for this week. <laughs> As we move into the skill players, because we don't want to waste our time on the quarterbacks. No one cares about quarterbacks. I don't care about quarterbacks. Let's talk about Jeff Wilson. Let's not talk about Jeff Wilson because you must be in a peasant league if he's available. But if he is available and you're in a peasant league, that means the peasants don't have any money to spend and you have money to spend. So spend it all on Jeff Wilson because he has taken over Raheem Mostert as we correctly projected him to do so. I know Tony's smiling behind the fucking laptop right now, me even talking about Jeff Wilson. But if he happens to be available, go get him. He's probably not available unless you're a fucking peasant. Let's move on to the non-peasantry players. So let's talk about the wide receivers for this week. We have Terrace Marshall, who's been extremely disappointing up until the previous two weeks where he started to put up numbers. He's starting to get a ton of red zone and end zone looks. We are going to have a quarterback switch up, so I'm not really sure what that actually means for this team going forward. We go from P.J. Walker to Baker Mayfield, and Price Picks does have P.J. Walker's lineup there, so maybe they are not starting P.J. Uh, Baker Mayfield, which I think would actually be kind of good for Terrace Marshall because they've developed a little bit of a rapport here. Uh, but Terrace Marshall is a dude that I'm not overly excited about by any stretch of the imagination, but we're in week 10 and there's no one else to pick up, so... If you have to get excited by someone, he's like the piece of excitement for this week, unfortunately. And behind him, I do actually like Donovan Peoples-Jones. So Cleveland wide receiver, of course. They're playing at Miami. Miami's been a dreadful, dreadful defense. Donovan Peoples-Jones has been coming on as of late, and they need help behind Amari Cooper with David Njoku out for a prolonged period of time. And we're talking about, right, like I, I guess I'll circle back to the quarterbacks, but Deshaun Watson, 11-game suspension, the bye. He'll be back in week 13. He's someone that if you have room for, you obviously want to stash because you'll be able to start him for your fantasy playoffs and going forward. And that also means Donovan's people Jones is getting Deshaun Watson back as his quarterback, which is a massive upgrade to him as a wide receiver. So DPJ is another sneaky guy that I would definitely look to add if you need some uh, flex help. But behind him, we have like nobody else that's even semi. So we have DeAndre Carter. And then we have guys like Jamison Williams who are like returning from their injury. But we had a report like a couple weeks ago that said he was like a month off still. So he he still feels like he's a pipe dream for this year to be an impact in fantasy football. DeAndre Carter is a guy that I've talked about a little bit. He's playing some of the slot for LA now that Mike Williams and Keenan Allen are out. I expect both of them to continue to be out. So Carter caught, I think, like five or six balls. Had decent yardage. He's an okay PPR guy, but Josh Palmer seems to be the guy there in terms of pass catching. The big name for this week, of course, is Odell Beckham Jr. You know, there's reports of him signing with Dallas or maybe Green Bay or maybe San Francisco. I have always sided on being a pessimist when it comes to injuries. I'm an injury pessimist and it has served me well when it comes to fantasy football. Most people always go to best case scenario when a player is returning from injuries. They go to the best part of the timeline. They go to the best, you know, he's going to be explosive when he comes back. A doctor cleared him to practice. Therefore, he is 100% of what Odell is going to be. 22-year-old Odell ain't happening. I think what will happen is people will get overly excited about this. He might have like one or two usable games for fantasy. First, he needs to get signed, which he will. There's enough interest by teams that, you know, will trigger a signing. Then he needs to learn the playbook. Then he needs to be out there for a certain number of snaps. Then he needs to be 
actually explosive in play. He's coming back from reconstructive ACL surgery his second time. He's had so many serious injuries over the past, you know, five, six years. I have very little faith he'll be any thing close to what he had been prior to some of these injuries. So is he a good ad? Yeah, I think so. If you know, if you need someone that could possibly hit with like there's no black and white here. I'm not here to say that he can't hit, but the chances that I put in my head are like 10, 15% that he's actually going to give you usable wide receiver two game. I do think he'll maybe have like one five for 60 in a touchdown game, which will be great for you if you're in like week 15, week 16, whatever. I still think there is a I think there's just as good of a chance that he gives you zero startable games as he gives you like 60 to 70 percent of his games being actually usable regardless of what offense he goes into so I'm not overspending on Odell Beckham Jr. I would put somewhere between like maybe like five percent of the fab that I have remaining right now there's not a single player this week that I would actually put more than like 10 percent of my fab on even saying that next like Terrace Marshall's name is disgusting but behind Odell yeah you have these other guys hopefully coming back from injury the Jameson Williams the Traylon Burks those dudes no one else is actually really exciting for running backs behind Jeff Wilson which is unrealistic to have on your waiver wire. You have a couple other guys that I don't know if they're available on your waiver wire. Probably not either. If you look at like the sleeper numbers, technically they're available in over half the leagues, but like Gus Edwards, Kenyon Drake, both Baltimore running backs. We have no idea who's going to be healthy after their buy. They have the buy coming up, which already makes them less desirable, but they might be in a committee if Gus Edwards is back. Uh, Latavius Murray, I think is actually underrated. I think Latavius Murray out there in Denver, they get to play against Tennessee, which is a pretty good run defense and they're on the road against Tennessee, but Denver, if Malik Willis is playing, should probably have a pretty good game script and get the running backs very involved. He is like the number two, but he's not really the number two to Melvin Gordon right now. He's kind of like the number one and coming off the bye, hopefully you've got like a little bit of a reinvigorated offense out here in Denver. So I like Latavius Murray if he's available. Kyron Williams is probably the other guy I would look at that might be able to add a spark to your team. Uh, but Darrell Henderson looked explosive last week. Cam Akers came back, got like five carries. He looked terrible. So I don't expect him to come in and take like the, uh, the biggest part of the backfield. He also is coming out from a very very, very long injury. So it's like, how much can we really expect from him? All the shit I'm talking about, Odell Beckham Jr. Injury pessimism should be a very, very real thing. Um, so again, man, this is just me telling you why all these players stink. Alexander Madison, Rashad White are obviously really good handcuffs. Kylan Hill might be the only other name I would like kind of keep an eye on. He's the backup running back for Green Bay. And by backup, I mean the backup of the backup. But Aaron Jones is day to day, could miss some time with an ankle injury, which would put Kylan Hill in line for backup duties behind AJ Dillon. I mean, it's anyone's fucking guess as to how involved he'll be in the offense, but he was good last year prior to the ACL tear he had early on in the season, uh, missed the full year after his rookie year. So tough to really say what he's going to do on an NFL field, but he looked good in, in small sample size before he did. So moving over to the tight end position, it's a little bit more clear for me to see. Thanks to these beautiful glasses over at Felix Gray. Copped them over at felixgray.com. They are blue light blocking glasses. All right. So you've probably heard me talk about them before, but they're one of my favorite pieces of technology, one of my favorite products that's not going to break the bank for you. Blue light glasses basically protect your eyes and they block blue light from screens, from monitors, from cell phones. Most importantly, when y'all are scrolling t our TikTok feed at midnight, make sure you follow us at BDGE, two underscores on all social platforms. They are these wonderful glasses that protect your eyes from that light. Therefore, your body will produce melatonin at night when you are wearing them rather than seeing a bunch of light and being like, oh, we're still wide awake. Nope. Boom. Block. Like a good offensive lineman, these things are these are your linemen right in front of your eyeballs, right? Don't matter. You got Justin Fields' his eyeballs. You got linemen in front of him, letting him rack up the yardage, rack up the sleep, rack up the Z's with Felix Gray. They look stylish. They make you look smart. I'm not smart, but I look smart, right? Don't answer that question. But go over to FelixGray.com. Use promo code BDGE10, and you're going to get 10% off your purchase. Thank you, Felix Gray. Greg Dulcich. Bet he wears Felix fucking Gray because he's playing great. He gets his sleep, and he balls out on Sundays. They're coming off a bye, so it's possible someone in your league dropped him and now they're scrounging to get him back i don't know if that's a word but i would be if i had dropped him last week because he's been playing fantastic and he is available and they're playing tennessee and greg dulcich is a breakout rookie tight end something that we don't see often but he is one of them doing it and then we also have kate otten coming out of this rookie class so kate otten plays in tampa bay just came off a very big week they're playing seattle tampa bay is somehow only two and a half point not somehow i can you, you fucking know how if you've watched any ounce of football this year but they're two and a half point favorites at home against Seattle. Imagine saying that in the beginning of the year. Week 10, Tampa Bay is going to be two and a half point favorites at home. If I had to guess the spread of that in the beginning of the year, like preseason, 
I would have put it at double digits, maybe triple digits. Ain't happening though. Sad. Kate Otten, very involved in the offense right now. Uh, this this feels a little bit like fool's gold, a little bit of a trap where this week he might go like two for 16 or something like that. So again, not breaking the bank, but there's nobody else at tight end that I'm actually uh, excited for. You have Cole Komet. He has done absolutely nothing. Had one big game. Let's not go crazy. Noah Fant, Tyler Conklin on a bye, Hunter Henry on a bye, Foster Moreau. I think Darren Waller will be bike. So it's ugly out here, man. And then we can slide our way over to defenses and the number one defense on my list this week is the Denver Broncos because I think they have some longevity to them they play the Titans if Malik Willis is the starter you really want to have the Denver defense in your starting lineup after the Titans this week they play at home against the Raiders then they play the Panthers the week after that so you're talking about three startable games in a row they play the Ravens after that so you're probably not going to start them but that's three startable games so you can use them for week 10 11 and 12 so I like Denver a lot uh, Las Vegas versus Indianapolis. LV is not a good team, but Indianapolis is really not a good team. Uh, the Giants versus Houston. The Giants are pretty big favorites against Houston this week at home. I think this will be a really good matchup for them. I even like Seattle against Tampa Bay. Seattle's defense has been cranking uh, as of late, so they are a speculative ad. I can understand if you don't want to do that against Tom Brady. Chicago against Detroit is also another interesting one. Chicago got rid of a bunch of their defensive players, and what happens is, I want to look more into this this offseason, but a lot, a lot of the times we go into years where we expect like certain units of certain teams to play really poorly whether it's o-line or just defense as a whole a lot of the times because most of us as fantasy people don't actually know the personnel and because we don't know them, we just assume they're bad we're like oh they're you know no one's proven but that also leads to a lot of opportunity for it's almost like a lot of people in fantasy talk about ambiguous backfields it's like oh there's like a three or four man rotation and we don't know who to trust we haven't seen like the third or fourth string really play on the field i like that guy because of value he might break out that happens with defensive teams as well you have a group of like three to four unproven cornerbacks sometimes by the end of the year you have breakout cornerbacks and I'm not even saying this is what's happening in Chicago but this happens more often than not where you have units of defenses linebackers linemen secondaries where they're so unproven but by the end of the year there's a couple guys that just break out because they were never given the chance to do so before we might be seeing that with Chicago their offense is playing well a lot of times good offenses translate to good defenses and vice versa it makes it easier on the flip side of the ball Chicago against Detroit um, I think they are a defense to consider if you are streaming as well that is a waiver wire episode featured film for this week for week 10 if you hung around thank you hit the button that looks like this down below make sure you subscribe to the channel if you are new and we will see y'all in the coming days all right don't spend all your money on a little beckham jr please just venmo me that money instead love you and felix gray bdg 10 link in the description